Zach Rosenblatt joins me now. And listen, Zach, it has been a wild last 20 minutes here on the show. We got people coming in to defend Carson Wentz. We got people still saying they should trade him. Uh, you wrote a great story on how Howie Roseman and the Eagles understand that they have a franchise quarterback and that they, they need to retain him. Can you give uh, the listeners who didn't get a chance to read your story yet a little bit more information on that? Yeah, you know, one of the bigger topics of discussion uh, when we talked to Howie Roseman yesterday was, you know, centered around the, the reasons why they're making a lot of decisions they've made this offseason and why they've looked more towards the future on in compensatory picks and, and signing veteran guys at cheaper salaries. And, and it really all just circles back to Carson Wentz and his coming contract. They, they clearly, you know, this is the first time I think Howie's explicitly said, like, we want to sign Carson Wentz to an extension, like it's going to happen. And the fact that he's talking about it means that you can count on it happening, if, if not this offseason, then certainly next year when he's eligible. I mean, he's been eligible. But, yeah, the, the point being, you know, they, they clearly are still very high on Carson Wentz. Doug Peterson raved about him again today. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't have any hesitation about them thinking they did the right thing, picking him over Nick Foles. And I would expect if and when he does sign that contract that, you know, as, as it goes with these young quarterbacks, he'll probably set a record for a yearly salary. Do you think it's wise – that the Eagles at least wait till after this season to see if Carson, one, can stay healthy, two, can at least duplicate or at least come close to that 2017 regular season where, in my opinion, he was the MVP of the league. And last but not least, show that all these character concerns that came out, while it be all either true or not true, uh, kind of all wash away. Are those things that you want to see before the Eagles commit so much money to him? You know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because – they clearly are committed to him and they are confident that he's going to be that guy from 2017. And if you feel that way and you have that confidence and you're not worried about the injuries and all the, the attitude stuff, then you kind of, you kind of would behoove them to sign him sooner because you, like I said, you know, every time a quarterback signs, they become the highest paid quarterback. And you have to think about the fact that next off season, Patrick Mahomes is going to be eligible for an extension and you can be sure that he's going to set a record and he might even blow it out of the water. And if, if he sets the market in a different way, then all of a sudden you're looking at, the difference between paying Carson Wentz $30 million a year and paying him $35 million a year, if not more than that. So it, it, these are all things you have to consider. I, you know, just sitting here right now, I think it does make a lot of sense to, to play out this season, see how it goes. They do have the option of simply extending him his fifth-year option, which I think would be around $25 million. But at the same time, if this is a guy that you, you view as your long-term quarterback and they, and they think is going to be okay, then I think it, it makes some sense to sign him out. You know, they're, they're building the cap. They're, the way how he structured these contracts, they, they're a lot of, uh, you know, they're, they're worth a lot more money later in the contract, which, you know, points towards the Eagles, you know, paying Carson Wentz sooner rather than later. I don't know how soon exactly that's going to be. I could see the argument both ways. I could see the argument for paying him right now. I could see the argument for waiting until next year or even, you know, maybe it's week eight and, and they're pretty happy with the way he's playing and they decide to throw him a contract extension. Then, you know, they've done that with Alshon Jeffrey in the past and, and Timmy Jernigan got his extension in the middle of the season. So I think all three of those options are on the table. We're talking with Zach Rosenblatt. You can follow him on Twitter at Zach Blatt, uh, capital Z, capital B. Uh, he's the Eagles beat writer for NJ.com. Uh, Zach, so looking at the Eagles roster right now, they added Deshaun Jackson, uh, you know, got the return there. They got Vinnie Curry back. What do you believe are still the glaring holes that are keeping the Eagles from last year? Remember after the Super Bowl, everybody were talking about how they expect this team to be one of the top teams in the NFC. To now people are saying, well, okay, can they even be the top team in their division anymore? You know, I, I, their roster, you know, you have guys getting healthy, which I think is a huge factor considering they have a lot of guys that were lost for the season with injury last year. I think top to bottom, this is one of the better rosters in the NFC. There's not many, like, clear holes until you go like down the depth chart a little bit. But the most obvious one and the one I hear the most about from fans in particular is the running back position. Of course, they still haven't added anybody. So as of now, their only guys they have returning are Corey Clement, Josh Adams, Wendell Smallwood, and even Boston Scott. These, these, those are all rotational guys at best in reality. And it's pretty clear running back is a need. It's also pretty clear they don't maybe value that position as much as some other teams do. So I wouldn't, expect, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't do anything until the draft or later. That's kind of what they've been saying. Um, so I would say that's a big need. I would say linebacker, they could use some more talent there. That's another position they don't really value that much. So I don't think they're going to invest very heavily in it. And the one I have my eye on is defensive end because, you know, you have 
Brandon Graham coming back. He is 30, turning 31. You have Derek Barnett, who missed most of last season after a shoulder surgery. And Chris Long is still a question mark. We don't know if he's going to retire. Vinny Curry is 30 years old and coming off one of his worst seasons, though he was hurt quite a bit last year. And we don't really know what they have in Josh Sweat yet. So I think defensive end, you know, in terms of the future, maybe not necessarily this season, but I think if you look beyond 2019, I think defensive end is a position they really need to invest in in the draft. When you look at the backup quarterback spot, obviously Nate Sudfeld, they put that second round tender on him. They obviously think high of him. But do you still think they could draft a guy maybe in the later rounds or at least sign a veteran to kind of compete with Nate Sudfeld? Because let's be honest, as high as the Eagles are on him, we don't know what he can really do if Carson does go down again. And you got to rely on Nate Sudfeld for a five or six game stretch. Yeah, I think that's a fair concern. You know, you had Nick Foles and you knew you had a Nick Foles, especially this last season when Wentz went down towards the end. So that is a question. And, you know, Doug Peterson talked today and he's talked in the past about how uh, when possible, he kind of likes bringing in a developmental quarterback every year if he can. And that means drafting a guy in the mid to late rounds. And he sounded pretty enthusiastic about this crop of quarterbacks in that range. So I wouldn't be surprised if they drafted someone. And then, you know, the veteran QB market has kind of thinned out as, as guys have signed elsewhere. But I still would expect them to bring, you know, a, a, an arm to compete with Nate Sudfeld in training camp at the least, even if it's a guy that you're only signing, you know, purely to compete with Nate. I think that that'll be very valuable for a young guy like that who, like you said, that doesn't really have any real game experience. You know, he came in in that Cowboys game last year in Week 17 that didn't really matter. And then he played like a series or two after Nick Foles got hurt against the Redskins when that game was already out of hand. So they they really don't know what they have in him in terms of what he can do when the pressure is on. So it, it would behoove them for sure to bring some competition. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they drafted and signed someone. Uh, I got a fan question for you. And it's funny because you just talked about Doug loving bringing in a guy every year to develop or something like that. Tyree Jackson, he's a quarterback that I don't know his draft range really. I know it's not that high. But there are fans that say, hey, you know, that's a guy that's a developmental guy. He could be a third string or a fight for the second string. But in a couple of years, he could be a reliable backup. Um, what do you think about him and the Eagles potentially interest if there is any in him? He's one of the ones I'm, I'm most intrigued by in terms of the Eagles, honestly. Because, you know, the, the quarterbacks they tend to bring in, there's, you know, big six foot five, big armed quarterbacks. You look at Nick Foles, Carson Wentz. And Nate Sudfeld, all three of them were at least six foot five, and they all had really strong. They all have really strong arms, and I think Terry Jackson is clearly a project. Uh, the only thing with him is, you know, I think his draft range is like so wide range because he has pretty high ceiling, though he is a developmental guy. So you know, you could see him going anywhere from round three to round six or something like that. So if I don't, I don't see the Eagles drafting a quarterback before the fourth round, but what, if he's there in the four to seven range, uh, I mean, he's certainly a guy I think they should consider. When you look at Deshaun Jackson coming back, and we talked about it earlier in our conversation, how much left do you honestly believe that he has in the tank? To me, watching him the last couple of years, he hasn't lost a step at all. And he is still, to me, a top three guy as far as speed-wise in this league, only behind maybe Tyreek Hill. And I haven't seen enough of John Ross to say him. So, I mean, I'd put him at number two. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Deshaun Jackson, to me, could really help this team. And I'm not talking about just his production, but what he could open up for guys like Jeffrey, Ertz, et cetera. Yeah, I think, you know, last year he led the league in yards per catch, and he's 32 years old. So I think it's pretty fair assessment to say he hasn't lost a step speed-wise. And, you know, with with the Buccaneers and then with the Redskins before that, he was he was – basically the number one or number two receiver with the Eagles. He doesn't, he's probably the third or fourth option at best. So, you know, they're, they're adding a deep threat that they've tried to add the last couple of years and failed. You know, Torrey Smith was a great locker room guy, but they signed him to be a deep threat and he wasn't a very good deep threat. And then last year they signed Mike Wallace and he, he got hurt in week two. And even before that, he wasn't really looking quite, quite like the same player of old. So, this is a clear upgrade at a position of need. This, like you said, this opens things up, and almost become, you know the biggest question almost becomes like how are they going to spread the ball around, which is a good problem to have because now you have you have him, you have Alshon Jeffrey, you have Nelson Aguilar, and then you have Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. So you know when they're running twelve personnel, who's the receiver that sits out? When they're all playing, who's getting all the touches? And is Deshaun someone who's going to be willing to play up? you know, take a backseat role that he's never really had in his career. He sounds like he is willing and everybody raves about how much he's matured. And but that if there's any question marks with him, it's just being willing to take on a smaller role in his health because he does miss games every now and then. But that's kind of expected for a player of his size. 
Uh, talking to Zach Rosenblatt, follow him on Twitter, at Zach Blatt, with a capital Z and a capital B. That's at Zach Blatt, Eagles beat writer for NJ.com. Uh, read a lot of his stories on NJ.com, does a great job, great writer. Um, he also used to cover the Sixers, I believe, last year, and he did a great job with that, too. So really a uh, great follow and write some great things. Uh, Zach, I want to move on to the NFL as a whole, and specifically the draft. Uh, the Kyler Murray story has been an intriguing one for me because you're talking about a guy at that size where at the beginning of the year he wasn't on anyone's board, and now a lot of people are talking about him going number one overall. What is your personal uh, belief about Kyler Murray as a player, and do you honestly believe that he's going to go number one overall to the Cardinals? You know, I, he, his, his skills are hard to ignore. You know, the height thing is just kind of lingering there because he's even shorter than Russell Wilson was. But he's just so dynamic. He's such a great – such a great thrower on the run and he has great accuracy down the field and you know I, he's a guy who's been a winner and a leader and I, I i out of these quarterbacks i think i'd be the most confident that he's going to become you know a stud and it does the discussion the way the cardinals have handled this whole discussion is pretty mind-boggling to me considering they just drafted a guy last year and they refused to commit to josh erosion beyond this year which makes me think they are legitimately considering kyler murray and i've heard that uh, around the league and, I, I mean, the thing is, you know, if you think Kyler Murray is, is capable of being a superstar, then you don't worry about it too much. You get him, and then you see what you can get for Josh Rosen on the open market. And I think that's a legitimate possibility. And if that's what they view Kyler Murray as, which I kind of do as well, I think he could be a really, really good quarterback. I, I think that's not the worst move. Uh, there's a report that the Eagles and Ravens uh, will have some joint practices uh, ahead of their preseason matchup this upcoming preseason and training camp. Uh, talking about Kyler Murray, let's talk about a guy like Lamar Jackson. Um, do you think the NFL is starting to embrace uh, more guys like this, guys that uh, come from those spread systems, but the NFL are, uh, coaches are designing systems to fit them rather than taking a guy like that and saying, well, you have to run my pro-concept co uh, offense, and if you can't, you just can't play in this league? Well, I think what you're saying, I think around the league, coaches are getting a lot smarter. And there's a lot more analytics involved. There's a lot more... You know, I think the Eagles even played a big part in this. You know, teams are working more towards bringing talented players and then figuring everything out, else out afterwards. You bring the best players you can into your system, and then you make it work around them. The Eagles had a system for Carson Wentz, and then they changed it for Nick Foles, and, and it worked, you know, like a glove. And John Harbaugh, you know, he has, a, he has a background with the Eagle organization too, obviously. And, you know, they, they picked Lamar Jackson full well knowing what his skills were. And they started, once he came in, you saw this, they went from a passing offense to almost a run exclusive offense, and it worked. And they, I know that he struggled in that game in the playoffs, but, you know, Lamar Jackson, he's a really dynamic weapon, and you do what you can to get the ball in the hands of a guy like that. And I think it's not as simple anymore as just, is this guy only a runner? Is this guy only a thrower? You just, you build the offense around your talent, and if the guy is talented enough to, to be the kind of player that Lamar Jackson is, you make it work. Great stuff, great stuff. You can follow Zach at Zach Blatt on Twitter. That's at Zach with a capital Z and a capital B uh, on Twitter. Eagles beat writer for NJ.com. Zach, I appreciate your time, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me, man.